If we want to find the volume of a solid resulting from rotating the area between two curves, we do things very similarly to when we're just finding the rotation solid between one curve and the x-axis. So we take pi times the integral from c to d, and again that's, those are the x values where the two curves cross, and we square the function that's on top, then we subtract the square of the function that's on the bottom, and then we integrate it. Here is, is an example of a problem with two functions. First we draw the square root of x, and then next we'll draw the next function which is y equals one tenth x, the line with the slope of one tenth. And then we're going to cut this off at x equal four. So we're going to draw a line down at x equal four, and we're going to shade the region between the two functions up to x equal four. Now we're going to rotate this region about the x-axis, and now we're going to find the volume of this solid. Okay, so here's our example. This is our region that we're rotating. So we're going to set up our integral according to the formula. The volume equals pi times the integral from c to d of big R of x squared minus little r of x squared dx. So our big R of x is going to be the square root of x. So I'm going to go down a little bit. The volume equals pi times the integral, and we're going from 0 to 4 on the x-axis since we're integrating with respect to x. We're going to take the square root of x and square it. and then we're going to subtract one-tenth x squared. And then we're going to take the integral of that dx. So, We write equals pi, and I'm going to write the integral when I square out those things. Oops. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of one tenth x squared is one one hundredth x squared, and we're going to integrate that with respect to x. So we get one half x squared when we integrate x, and we get one over three hundred x cubed when we integrate one one hundredth x squared. And now we're going to evaluate these from zero to four. So we still have the pi on the outside. We have one half four squared minus one over three hundred times four cubed, and then that ends up, we subtract zero from that, because evaluating the function at zero gives us zero. So we get pi times one half of sixteen is eight, minus sixty-four over three hundred, which we can reduce, but we'll do that in a minute. So, 8 minus 64 over 300 gives us 584 times 584 over 75. 
So our final volume is 584 pi over 75. Okay, now I want you to try, this is number five from the uh, section exercises, so you try this, pause the recording, and then come back and watch the solution. Okay, now that you've tried it, we're going to look at the solution. I've already worked it out, so I'm just going to walk you through it. The volume is equal to pi times the integral from zero to one of x squared squared because x squared is on top and x to the minus x to the fifth squared and we get the integral from zero to one of x to the fourth minus x to the tenth when we integrate we get one fifth x to the fifth minus one eleventh x to the eleventh evaluated from zero to one so when we plug in the one we get one fifth minus one eleventh when we plug in the zero we get zero so we don't have to worry about that part so we end up with six pi over 55. And that's our answer for the volume of the solid of revolution. Okay, now we're going to talk about finding a solid of revolution revolved around the vertical axis. And if we have a vertical axis of revolution, our formula is relatively similar. It's just both functions are with respect to y, meaning that you solve for x first and that your bounds c and d are bounds on y and you're integrating with respect to y. So let's do an example. This will be number eight out of your textbook. Okay, so here's our function y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared, which is a quarter circle, but this time we're revolving around the y-axis. So the first thing we have to do to this is solve our equation y equals square root of 16 minus x squared for x. So the first thing we have to do is write it down. And then we're going to square both sides. So we have to get rid of that root. and we get y squared equals 16 minus x squared. Next we're going to add x squared to both sides. So we get x squared plus y squared equals 16, which is the equation of a circle. And then we're going to move y squared to the right hand side. And then we take the square root of both sides, which gives us x equals the square root of 16 minus y squared. Now that our equation's in terms of y, and we know our bounds are 0 to 4 on the y-axis, we can write our volume formula. The volume equals pi times the integral from 0 to 4. And in this case, we're dealing with the y-axis and the square root of y, or 16 minus y squared. So it's going to be the square root of 16 minus y squared squared minus 0 squared because the y-axis is uh, x equals zero. So we're going to take that and integrate it with respect to y, which is going to give us a lovely little thing to integrate. It's going to be just 16 minus y squared dy. Definitely not a horrible thing to have to integrate.
So when I integrate, I get pi times 16y minus 1 third y cubed. And I have to evaluate that from 0 to 4. So that gives me pi times 16 times 4 minus 1 third times 4 cubed. We would have minus 0 as well when we plug 0 in for everything. So we get 64 minus 64 thirds, which gives us 128 pi over 3 as our volume.